I completed day one of my water fast. I said I was gonna do three days. And um, I'm still having mucus. And, but I didn't really cough yesterday, only like a little bit. And I coughed a little bit this morning, not really. Though, did my neti pod. And um, uh, I was tempted to eat some macaroni yesterday because my nephew brought some in for me to feed the baby. And I wasn't hungry, but I smelt it. And you know how you have to blow the food for the baby? And man, it smells so good. And then I was tempted to eat a pickle. Um, because my nephew opened up the jar and oh my god that smells so good but other than that I didn't eat anything and I am chewing gum because I, I like the mint so um, what I wanted to talk about today was uh infertility so basically me and Buki we were trying to get pregnant for five years and this goes along with uh, have to do with my weight too so um try to get pregnant but prior to uh, trying to get pregnant I was on birth control for um, four years and so and the last birth control I was on was the implant, the one in my arm now I had mentioned shortly in the other video that it stopped my cycle for two years that I was still having the symptoms. And I did gain weight. Now I'm gonna contribute that weight to uh, being away from home from the, for the first time in a different state. Um, and the birth control, I think it had something to do with that too. So, I got it removed in uh, 2012, sometime around 2012, I think like the winter, before the, the year ended, or early uh, January 2013, something like that. And I didn't get pregnant until 2017. So, um, oh, excuse me. I got pregnant in 2016, around uh, August, September. So, um, basically, was trying to get pregnant from, I guess, um, from around 2012 to 2016 when I ended up getting pregnant. So they were saying, okay, put it back. So they were basically saying when I went to the doctor, you know, they asked you, oh, do you have um, irregular periods, this and this and that. So when I stopped the um, birth control, my period came back fine. I had a regular period, always on time. Um, and so, because they were trying to see 
with my weight if I had um, PCOS and it's like polycystic ovarian syndrome. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. And so they had did some labs and when they did the labs, that's how I found out that I had a thyroid problem, hyperthyroid. And um, so with the PCOS, they had to do a dye test. Now, all of this was over a couple months. They did a dye test where they put the needle into your uterus and shoot the dye into your um, tubes to see if you have any scar tissue or whatever. And then I also had to do a regular ultrasound. So with the, the ultrasound, um, I did the vaginal ultrasound in um, no, regular ultrasound that's outside. So they look at your ovaries and stuff. And they found that there was some uh, um, I forget what they like tissue or something um, and so I was like well uh, does that mean do I have PCOS or do I not and because other symptoms is like uh, hair growth and all that stuff and I didn't have that and they just gonna give me an answer. So basically, that wasn't the issue. Um, and so with the dye test, it's not supposed to hurt, but it was excruciating pain. And so basically what they do, they're pushing the dye in and they have to take a picture at the same time to see if it flows through your tubes and back. And well, it was so painful, they couldn't complete it. So, I didn't really have a result. Whether my tubes were blocked or if I had scar tissue or not. So, we went to the fertility specialist. And she did an ultrasound. I did an ultrasound there. I did like three or four different ultrasounds and um, we talked about possible methods if I don't get pregnant naturally so while that was going on uh, I was doing a lot of smoothing and juicing and walking and um, My baby kicked her shoe off. And uh, start taking this herb called Vitex. And doing Dr. Sebi's cleanse. So, you know, my heart was really aching for a child. Um, I just felt like everybody has children. Why not me? I tried to do it the right way, and that's not a diss to anyone else. But, you know, I didn't want to have kids until I was married. Because I see the struggle that my family members went through being a single mother. And it's not cool. So we chose to wait. And I also chose to wait until my husband was out of the military. Or at least off of his deployments. Um, so basically, we um, then my husband went to get his sperm tested. Through the VA first, and uh, the test came back that his sperm count was low. So then, when we went to the fertility specialist, he had to get another 
uh, sperm analysis, which is more, they test is more, um, they test more different things with the sperm. I'm saying it wrong, but you, you guys get what I'm saying. They analyze more stuff within the sperm sample. Not just like a basic one that like they did through the VA. So that was like a hundred and fifty dollars with the specialist, the fertility specialist. Every time I went, I had a copay. They just uh will only um cover my insurance only covers certain things. And I think we have Blue Cross Blue Shield at the time. So like certain labs and stuff so basically my husband also was doing dr sabi's cleanse and i'll have him insert it in the video um prior to that a little bit before i think like june or july i did a master cleanse or it was like all around the same time. I did the master cleanse and I lost 18 pounds on it. And you just, it's basically like a, a liquid clean, a liquid cleanse. It's a limp or it's called the lemonade diet. It's cayenne pepper, lemon and water and grade A or grade B maple syrup. And you just drink that all day. You can also have tea. You can do a, a, a coffee enema too, but I didn't do that. And you can do a sea salt flush. I did do the sea salt flush. And it's not that bad. You just put a little sea salt pink or pink Himalayan salt in a bottle of water. You drink it down and flush your system out every morning. So... Um, I was like really, I guess, depressed about not having a child or empty womb syndrome or whatever you want to call it. And so, around the same time, um, we decided to be foster parents, which before we got married, when we were just dating. We had already talked about how we wanted to be foster parents. So I was technically a foster child. I was raised by my grandmother and my aunt. And uh, my husband, two of his brothers, went into foster care when their mother died. So those would be two separate videos on that. Um, so we just had a heart to want to foster children. So we went through the whole process and um, we were ready to get a child. And before that though, my granny, I'm super close to my granny, that's my mama, basically. She um, was like, oh, you can believe in them doctors if you want to, but you're gonna have a, a baby. Don't even worry about it, Athena. And um, right, watch as soon as, uh, you get approved for the kids or as soon as you get the kids then you're going to get pregnant and um so I uh have conversations with the Lord I was raised Christian we're not heavy into the church anymore but um you know my spiritual connection remains so I was talking to the Lord and I was like God you know if I don't get pregnant before the end of this year, because this is the summer, about to be the start of the summer. If I don't get pregnant before the end of this year, then I'll go on and do the second phase of the fertility. So like in vitro, IVF, there's other methods um, too. And so God told me, now, God speaks to us all differently, but this is how God speaks to me. God said, 
you know, I'm not a man to lie to you. I promised you a child, you know, so I'm going to keep my word. And God said it so clear. And I said, okay, Lord, all right. And so I promise y'all, after I finish that cleanse the next month, I was pregnant. Like the next month, I wanted the next two months. I was pregnant. I also seen online where you can, if you had a blockage or whatever in your tubes, or you can massage your stomach clockwise and counterclockwise with some oil. And so that's what I did too. And um, I'll insert the video when I told my husband that we were pregnant. So I'll go on and tell you the story in my next video, how my first pregnancy went and some of the challenges that we went through with that. Okay, peace y'all. Until next time. Smell it. land so it's another day we on our walk again <laughs> poop over there posing um I can complete it. Um, and so, basically, y'all, uh, I just want to say, you know, God is faithful. And we have to do our part to heal ourselves before, you know, you seek. Uh, medical um, God is faithful y'all and uh, you know if you want to see I believe that you can so you guys this is I guess part two to the infertility thing and now I'm going to talk about how it was when I got pregnant so my first pregnancy with poo poo and uh, so now that I was pregnant so excited and went to the doctor they confirmed it went um and they did they do an ultrasound I don't think they did an ultrasound yet I don't know I forget but I'll have my husband speak on on it too. He's behind me. Way far behind me. So. 
basically I was like a month. And so then it's like, uh, after they test you, after they tested me at the hospital, the doctor's office, um, of course it was positive. And then I let them know at the uh, specialist office, I had to go there too. And everything was fine. So here we go. Uh, maybe I was like six weeks going on, eight weeks. All of a sudden, I just start bleeding, y'all. And uh, that was just, it was so horrible. So it was like, go to the hospital. I go to the hospital. And they uh, put the, um, they did an ultrasound. In the ultrasound, um, uh, they found the heartbeat. So the baby had a heartbeat. So everything was okay. So kind of for the most part, but before they even did that, like they put me on, they gave me some progesterone to stop the bleeding. They checked my cervix. And it was like, oh, well, your cervix is closed. So, we don't know, like, if you have a miscarriage or not. So, my blood pressure, of course, is sky high. Like, my anxiety is just crazy. Because I'm just like, we waited so long to get pregnant. We finally get pregnant and then I'm losing my baby what what the heck right and then they wouldn't it was it like took hours and hours for them to do the ultrasound so finally because they did an ultrasound and they were like hesitant to do it because at the hospital and I actually worked at the hospital um they don't have a, a uh, labor and delivery there they used to but they closed it down and I believe it's open now again but at the time they didn't have um, any doctors that were in that field so um, they were like not really trying to give me the ultrasound anyway so they did the ultrasound and they found the heartbeat. So, and they found a sack. Um, but I was bleeding still. So, I made an appointment with the specialist. I go to the specialist. Before I go to the specialist, I go to my regular doctor. And they, um, uh, do an ultrasound there so when they do they ultrasound guess what they found out y'all that I was having twins they seen two sacks and in my heart because twins run in my family twins run in my husband's family too I just was like you know I just felt like I was going to have twins. I knew I was going to have a girl first because I just feel like I'm the oddball of my family. And both of my sisters, they had boys. So I knew I was going to have a girl. And um, so then I had to go and see the specialist the fertility specialist so went there the fertility specialist do the ultrasound there and she's like okay well um the heart rate is fine the heart rate was fine from the last video i mean from the last ultrasound that we had deal with my primary doctor and 
um, when the specialist checked it, she said, okay, we don't see the second heartbeat. And um, we see where the second sack was, but it's not there anymore. So they ended up putting me on progesterone and uh, basically bed rest. And I had to quit my job. So I ended up quitting my job. And um, 